Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering RSA Conference 2020 San Francisco. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here in San Francisco at the Moscone Center for RSA Conference 2020. I'm John Furrier, your host. We are a very special guest, uh, the COO of VMware, Sanjay Poonin, uh, CUBE alumni. When you talk about security, you talk about the modern enterprise as it transforms, new use cases, new problems emerge, new opportunities exist. Here to break it down, Sanjay, welcome back. Thank you, John, always a pleasure to be on your show, and I think it's my first time at RSA. We've talked a number of times, but nice to see you here. Well, what's your security is, guard. Well, this is really why I wanted you to talk to you because uh, operations has become now the big conversation around security. So, you know, security was once part of IT, it comes out and part of the board conversation, but when you look at security, all the conversations that we're seeing that are the most important conversations are almost a business model conversation. It's almost like if you're the CEO of the company, you got H people, HR, organizational behavior, collaboration, technology stack, compliance and risk management. So the threat of cyber has to cut across now multiple operational functions of a business. It's no longer one thing, it's everything. So this is really kind of makes the pressure of the business owners to be mindful of a bigger picture. And the attack velocity is happening so much faster. More volume of attacks, milliseconds and nanosecond attacks. So this is a huge, huge problem. I need you to break it down for me. Good, <laughs> that wonderful intro. No, I would say you're absolutely right. First off, security is a boardroom topic. Uh, audit committees are asking, you know, the CIO so often, you know, reports a report directly, sometimes often not even to the CIO, to the head of legal or finance, and often to the audit committee. So it's a boardroom topic. Then you're right, every department right now cares about security because they've got both threat and security of nation state or malicious organized crime trying to come at them, but they've also got physical security in mind. I mean, listen, coronavirus is a serious threat to our physical security and we're really concerned about our employees and the idea of uh, cyber security and physical security. We put, at VMware, cyber security and, and um, um, uh, physical security in one guy. The CISO, he actually runs both. So I think you're absolutely right. And if you're a head of HR, you care about your employees. If you care head of communications, you care about your reputation or, and marketing the same way. If you're a finance, you care about your accounting systems and having all of the IT systems there. So we certainly think that holistic approach ap des deserves a different approach to security, which is it can't be silo, silo, silo. It has to be intrinsic. And I've talked on your show about why intrinsic yeah. and how we differentiate it. That intrinsic security is what I talked about this morning in my keynote. Well, and then again, to connect the dots there, it's not just security, it's the applications that are being built on mobile, for instance. If I got a mobile app, I have milliseconds to respond to whether something's yes or no. That's the app on mobile, but still the security threat is still over here, and I got the app over here. This is now the reality, and again, Airwash was a big acquisition that you did, obviously had some security. Carbon Black was a $2 billion acquisition that VMware made, that's a security practice. How is it all coming together? Can great, you take a minute question. to explain the, the VMware? Because it's not just security, it's what's around it. Yeah, I think we began to see over the course of the last several years that there were certain control points in security that could help you know, bring order to this chaos of 5,000 security vendors. They're all legitimate, they're all here at the show, they're good vendors. But you cannot, if you are trying to stay healthy, go to a doctor and expect the doctor to tell you eat 5,000 tablets to stay healthy. It's just it's not sustainable. It has to be baked into your diet. You eat your proteins, your vegetables, your fruit, your, drink your water. The same way we believe security needs to become intrinsically deeper parts of the platform. So what were the key platforms and control points we decided to focus on? The network. The endpoint, and you could think of endpoint as two, both client and workload. Identity, cloud, analytics. You take a few of those. The network, we've been laboring the last seven years to build a definitive networking company. And now a networking security company where we can do everything from data center networking to firewalls to load balancing to SD-WAN in this NSX platform. You remember where you bought NYSERA. The industry woke up like, what's VMware doing in networking? We've now built on that. 13,000 customers, really good growing revenue business in networking and are now doing networking security. That space is fragmented across Cisco, Palo Alto, F5, Netscaler, Checkpoint, Riverbed. VMware cleans that up. You get to the endpoint side, we saw the same thing. 
you know, you had Endpoint Management, now Workspace ONE, the sequel of what AirWatch was. But Endpoint Security, again, fragmented. You had Symantec, McAfee, now CrowdStrike, Tenable, Qualys. You know, I mean, just so many fragmentanium. We felt like we could come in now and clean that up too. And so that's gotta, what we're about to do. Yeah, well, thanks for the, um, explaining that, but I want to get now to the next conversation point that I'm interested in, operational impact. Because when you have all these things to operationalize, we saw that with DevOps and cloud, now hybrid. You got to operationalize this stuff. You guys have been in the operations side of the business from VMware, that's what you're known for. Yeah, and the developers are now on the horizon. I got to operationalize all the security. What do I do? I'm yeah. the CISO. I think it's really important that in understanding operations of the infrastructure, we have that control point called vSphere. And we're now going to take carbon black and make it agentless on the server side workloads, which has never been done before. That's operationalizing it at the infrastructure level. At the end point, we're going to unify Carbon Black and Workspace ONE into a unified agent, never been done before. That's operationalizing it on the client side. And then on the container and the DevOps side, you're going to start bringing security into the container world. We actually happen in our great point of view in containers. You've seen us do stuff with Tanzu and Kubernetes and Pivotal bringing that together. Container security is a very logical thing that we will add there. So we have a very good view of where the infrastructure and operations parts that we know well. Uh, vSphere, NSX, Workspace ONE, containers with Tanzu. We're going to bring security to all of them and then bake it more and more in so it's not feeling like it's a point tool. The same platform, Carbon Black, will be able to handle security of all of those use cases. One platform, several use cases. Are you happy with the Carbon Black acquisition? Listen, you know, you stay humble and hungry, uh, John, for a fundamental reason. I've been involved with a number of acquisitions from my SAP to VMware days. A billion dollar plus, we've done tuck-in ones. The Harvard Business Review had an article several years ago which chronicled acquisitions, and majority of them fail. And they fail not because of process, a product, they fail because good people leave. One of the things that we have as a recipe to this acquisition, we applied it to AirWatch, we applied it to NYSERA, there is usually some brain trust. You remember in the days of NYSERA, it was Martin Casado. In the case of AirWatch, it was John Marshall and that team. We want to preserve that team to help incubate this and then what Breva brings the scale. So I'm delighted about Patrick Morley. I, I want to have him on your show next time because he's now the head of our security business unit. He's culturally a fit for VMware, humble, hungry. He wants to see just, we have a billion dollar business now in security across networking, endpoint, and thing. he wants to take just his piece of it, right? The common black piece of it, make it a billion dollar business while the overall security business goes from three to five. And I think we're going to count on him for many years to come to really be a key part of VMware's fabric, a great leader. So we're successful if he's successful. What's my job then? He reports to me, is to get all the obstacles out of the way. Get every one of my core reps to sell Carbon Black. Every one of the partners like Dell to sell Carbon Black. So one of the deals we did within a month is Dell has now announced that their preferred solution on Dell laptops is Carbon Black. They were working in the past with Silence and with CrowdStrike, now it's Carbon Black. Every Dell laptop now has the default option as Carbon Black. So as we do these, John, the way we roll is we're not here to basically come in and occupy that acquisition, get the obstacles out of the way, and then let Patrick scale this. The same way Martin Casado or John Mark. So we have a playbook, we're going to apply that playbook, stay humble and hungry, and you ask me that question every year. How are we doing in Carbon Black? I will be checking, I, I will be putting a check on you, and we'll be checking in. How are we the, done in AirWatch? What do you think? Pretty good. Very good, Pretty I think. Pretty good, stayed under right. the radar, kept growing it. It's top right now in every magic quadrant. That business is significant bigger than the 100 million. Well, NYSERA, how do we do a NYSERA, NSX? It's evolved. <laughs> See, <laughs> quite it's a bit. It's evolved. So this is back to the point, VMware makes bets. So unlike other acquisitions where they're big numbers, still big numbers, billions are billions, but they're bets. Airwatch is a good bet, turned out okay. Bet, the you're bets. Being, you're being conservative today, anyway. The bets that you're making now, how would you classify those bets? What are the big bets that you're making right now? Listen, I think there's um, a handful of them. I like to think of things as no more than three to five. We're making a big bet on multi-cloud, okay? The world is going to be private, public edge. You and us have talked a lot about VMware AWS, expanded now to Azure and others. We have a big future there, private cloud, public cloud edge. Number two, we're making a big bet on app modernization with the container level, Tanzu is our thing. Number three, we're making a big bet in virtual cloud networking, because we think long term, there's going to be only two networking companies that matter, VMware and Cisco. Number four, we're making a big bet in the digital workspace, built on what we've done with AirWatch and other technology. Number five, we're making a big bet in security. So these five 
we think of what can take the company from 10 to 20 billion. So we, you know, um, uh, we, we've talked about the $10 billion mark, um, and the next big milestone for the company is a $20 billion mark. And you have to ask yourself, can you see this company with these five bets going from where they are, about a $10 billion yeah. revenue company to a $20 billion? We hope we can. Dave is doing a breaking and now he might have already shipped the, the, the piece this morning on multi-cloud. Um, he and I were commenting that, well, I said it's the third wave of cloud computing, public cloud, hybrid, multi-cloud. And hybrid's the first step towards multi-cloud. Everyone kind of knows that. Um, but I want to ask you, because I told Dave, and we kind of talked about, this is a multi-decade growth opportunity. Wealth creation, innovation growth, new opportunity, multi-cloud, for the generation, take the, this industry to the next level. How do you see that multi-cloud wave? Do you agree on the multi-generational? And if so, what specifically do you see that unfolding into? Listen, I'm deeply inspired by what Andy Jassy, Satya Nadella, you know, the past leading PF to Thomas Curry, and these folks have created big cloud businesses. Amazon's the biggest uh, in the IS past world, Azure is second, Google is third, and just market shares. These folks collectively are growing, growing really well. In some senses, VMware gets to feed off that ecosystem in the public cloud. So we are firm believers in what you described. Hybrid cloud is the path to the multi-cloud. We coined that term hybrid cloud. In fact, the first incantation of vCloud Air was called vCloud hybrid service. So we coined the term hybrid cloud, but the world is now multi-cloud. The, the, the key though is that I don't think you're going to work away from, those three clouds I mentioned have deep pockets. They're, none of them are going away. And they're going to compete hard with each other. The market shares may stay the same. Our goal is to be a Switzerland player that can help our customers take VMware workloads, optimize them in the private yeah. cloud first. Okay? When a Bank of America says on their earnings call, Brian Moynihan said, I can run a private cloud better than a public cloud. And I can save two billion doing that. Okay? It turns out many of the banks are actually running on VMware. That's their call. But there are other companies like Freddie Mac are going all in with Amazon. We want to ride the best of both worlds. If you're a private cloud, we're going to make you the most efficient private cloud with VMware software. Well, and if I you're a public cloud and going to Amazon, like a Freddie Mac, we'll help you ride your apps into that through VMware. So sometimes history can be a predictor of future behavior. And just to kind of rewind the computer industry clock, if you look at mainframe mini computers, internetworking, internet, proprietary network operating systems dominated it. But you saw the shift, and it was driven by choice for customers, multiple vendors, interoperability. So to me, I think cloud, multi-cloud is going to come down to the best choice for the workload, and then the environment of the business. And that's going to be a, a spectrum. But the key in that is multi-vendor, multi, our friend choice, multi-vendor interoperability. This is going to be the next equation in the modern era. It's not going to look the same as mainframe minis networking, but it'll create the next Cisco. It'll create the next new brand that may or may not be out there yet that might be competing with you. Or you might be that next brand. I, I so, hope. so interoperability, multi-vendor choice has been a theme in open systems for a long time, yeah. your reaction to that. I think it's absolutely right, John. You're onto something there. Listen, the multi-cloud world is almost a replay of the multi-hardware system world 20 years ago. If you asked who was a multi-hardware player before, it was Dell, HP, at the time IBM, now Lenovo, EMC, NetApp, so on and so forth, and server storage networking. The multi-cloud world today is Amazon, Azure, Google, if you go to China, Alibaba, and so on and so forth. A multi, uh, somebody has to be a Switzerland player that can serve the old hardware economy and the new hardware economy, which is the, which is the cloud. And then of course, don't forget the device economy of Apple, uh, Google, Microsoft there too. I think that if you have some fundamental first principles, you express one of them, listen, where open source exists, embrace it. That's why we're going big on Kubernetes. If there are multiple clouds, embrace it. Do what's right for the customer. Abstract away, that's what virtualization is. Manage common infrastructure across all of it, which is what our management principles are. Secure things at the point of every device and every workload. So those are the principles. Now, the engineering of it changes. The way in which we're doing virtualization today, in 2020, is slightly different from when um, Diane started the company in around the year 2000, 20 years ago. But the principles are same. We're just not working just with the hardware vendors, we're working with the cloud vendors. So you think choice is where it's at? The choice is what they want. Absolutely, absolutely. And you're right, it's choice because of certain workloads. We see, for example, 
Amazon having a head start in the public cloud markets, but there's some use cases where Azure is applicable, some other use cases where Google is applicable. And to us, if the entire world was only one hardware player, or only one cloud player, or only one device player, you don't need VMware. We thrive in heterogeneity. It's awesome, I love that world. Now, heterogeneity provided it's not 3,000 vendors. There's almost three, three of every kind. Three server vendors, three storage vendors, three networking vendors, three cloud vendors, three device vendors. VMware's in the middle of all of it. And yeah, there may be other companies who try to do that too. If they are, we should learn from them, do it better than them, and competition, even to us, is a good thing. All right, my final question for you is, uh, in the, yeah, the Dell Technologies family, of which VMware is a part of, although a big part of it, the crown jewel, as we've been calling them the cube, um, they announced RSA is being sold to a private equity company. What's the internal reaction amongst VMware folks and the, and the Dell technology family? Good move, no impact, what's we, the... We support Dell in you know, all the moves that they've made, um, and from our perspective, you know, if we're not owning it, we're going to partner it. So, I see no overlap with RSA. We partner with them, they've got three core pillars, Secure ID, NetWitness, and Archer. We partner with them really well. We have no aspirations to get into those aspects of governance, risk, and compliance, or uh, securities business, so it's a partner. So whoever's running it, Rohit runs that very well, he also owns, he runs this conference. We have a great relationship and we'll keep doing that well. We are focused on the areas I described, network, endpoint, security. And I think what Michael has done brilliantly through the course of the last few years is set up a hardware and systems company in Dell and allow the software company called VMware to continue to operate, and I think, you know, the movement of some of these assets between the companies, like Pivotal to us and so on and so forth, yeah. cleans it up so that now you've got both these companies doing well. Dell's gone public, VMware's gone public, and he has said on the record, what's good for Dell is good, what's good for VMware and vice versa. And good for the customer. And I think the key is there's now visibility on what cloud native looks like, hybrid, public, multi. Multi not so much, but you, you can almost, it's an easy bridge to get cross and get there. AI, cyber security, these are all big, clear trends. They're waves. Sanjay, great to Thank see you. you. Thanks for coming on. Um, your thoughts on the security show here? Uh, what's your, what's your I take I think away? the two uh, definitive security shows, and I hope it stays that way, even with the change of where RSA's ownership goes, is this conference and Black Hat. And we play in both. Uh, Amazon's conference now is totally starting to uh, That's reinforce. Reinforce. That's start cloud to show security. Up. Yeah, we'll show up there too. Uh, but I, we, we think, listen, there's what, 30,000 people here? So it's a force. It's a little bit like VMworld. We will play here, we'll play a big, we've got, you know, it just so happens because the acquisition happened before we closed them, but we have two big presences here, VMware and Carbon Black. Um, and it's an important business for us. I said, like I said, we have a billion dollar business in security today, about 30,000 customers using us in a security network endpoint cl cloud. I want to take that to be a multi, multiple times that size. And I think there's a path to do that because in a, it's an adjacent US in security, so we have our own kind of selfish motives here in terms of getting more mind share and security. We did a keynote this morning which was well received with Southwest Airlines. She did a great job. Carrie Mills, she was a fantastic speaker. And it was our way of showing in 20 minutes, not just our point of view, because you don't want to be self-serving, yeah. a practitioner's point of view, and that's what's really important. Well, final, on a personal note, um, you know, I always, always use the term tech athlete, uh, which I think you are one, you really work hard and are smart. But I got to get your thoughts because I saw your you know on Twitter um, on when IBM announced a new CEO, Arvind um, Krishna, Indian American, another CEO. This is a pattern. We're starting to see Indian American CEOs running com American companies because this is the leadership, and it's really a, a great thing in my mind. I think it's one of the most successful stories of meritocracy of all time. Your quick thoughts. I'm a big fan of Arvind. Big fan of Shantanu. Uh, Sundar Pichai, Satya Nadella, many of them are close friends of mine. Uh, many of them have grown up in southern India. We're at different ages, some of them are older than me. And in many cases, you know, we were following behind other great yeah. players like Vinod Khosla who came even 10 to 15 years prior. And you know, it's hard for an immigrant in this country. You know, yeah. um, when I first got here and I came as an immigrant to Dartmouth College, there may have been five or 10 brown-skinned people in the town of Hanover, New Hampshire. I don't know if you've been to New Hampshire. Yeah, I've been there, There's yeah. not many at that time, in the yeah. late 1980s. Now, of course, there's much more. Uh, so, you know, uh, we stay humble and hungry. There's a part of our culture in India that's really valued education and hard work. And people like Arvind and some of these other people, our products, I look up to them, the things I learn from them. 
and I'm, you know, for Love the country of India, it's a really good thing to see be, these I people think, be think, successful yeah. at name brand American companies, whether it's IBM or Microsoft yeah. or Google or Adobe or MasterCard. Yeah. So we're, we're, I'm in their fan club and there's a lot I learned from them. I just love being around people who love entrepreneurship, love innovation, love technology, and work hard. So congratulations Thank on you so much. all your success. Great to see you again. Always Sanjay Poonin, the COO of VMware here on the ground floor here at RSA Conference at Moscone, sharing his insight into the security practice that is now carbon black and VMware, all the good things that are going on there. Thanks for watching.